little delay. Um, uh, welcome to well the second session about um, uh, one of the non-Western language groups. Um, I'm Eyal from the uh, both the Hebrew and the Arabic uh, user groups, and we are talking about the state of right-to-left language support in uh, LibreOffice. And we're in 2022. The last time this session was given was in uh, 2018 in Tirana, so four years uh, since the this last uh, update. Um, what we're going to do today, we're not going to talk about right-to-left languages. I'm, I hope you all know what, what those are, um, uh, or at least, anyway, not a lot. We're not going to talk about how to switch between languages and what LibreOffice already has. Um, uh, but I am going to remind you about where we need support for these languages. Um, we're going to um, go over a few bug statistics, some important fixes uh, in the code, improvements to uh, right to left language related functionality over the past several years. Um, uh, and, um, and we are going to talk about challenges. Um, that are uh, well, outstanding today as well. So, right to left languages, oh, this shows some uh, stuff from a previous, uh, okay, so ignore the example uh, column except for the first two, uh, two um, uh, cells. For some reason, uh, well, just ignore it. Anyway, so the most popular uh, written language or script is Arabic, and a lot of uh, languages use it, um, uh, including in different parts of the world, not only in the, like in the Arab East and uh, in Central uh, and Western Asia. Um, there's the Nako language or script that's used by languages uh, in Africa, um, uh, which is the second largest. There's the Adlam script, used by the full of lang um, family of languages. And uh, unfortunately, I've not seen a single person in this conference uh, who uses these, any of these scripts, except perhaps for our uh, uh, Turkish uh, friend, who, uh, whose name ex escapes me, I'm sorry. And for him, it, it might be a second language, but no native language speaker of any of, from any of these groups. Uh, you also have Rohingya, then you have Hebrew, which is, well, overrepresented with me being here. We're only 8 million people uh, who speak it uh, natively. And uh, there are actually more, uh, both languages and scripts. And uh, later, if you watch these slides and want to see like the long list, um, uh, then it's on, on w3.org. They have a, a nice list of these. Um, What's important for me to note is that um, not a small percentage of the, the population of this planet use right-to-left scripts for writing, um, and something like 8% of the, of the like, most popular written languages, those with, with over 10 million speakers, um, and it's even higher for secondary languages. Um, and, and then, but if we look at the number of right to left language users among uh, overall users of LibreOffice, so this is very difficult to estimate, and I've cut a few slides where I was uh, like making a back of a cocktail napkin, or back of a backhand cocktail napkin estimate, so we won't have that. Um, but it is low relative to the, the percentage in the overall population size, and it's still low even if you want to normalize it, say, for development indices or number of people who use a computer at all or things like that. It's still low, so that's a problem. Um, right to left language support. So th this, this uh, few slides are, were actually bet a better fit for the other room and less for the like more technical um, uh, nitty-gritty room which we're in. Um, but it's not just in the code, so um, uh, we want, the, we need the, the full, the document model, the structure, the, the structural representation of it, the ODF specification, the way it's rendered, uh, both in sc on screen and in print, um, uh, different gadgets in the document, like comments and footnotes, need aspects of uh, functionality that are right to left specific. 
Uh, but, and, and that's not all. Um, there's actually a lot more. So there's the user interface, which is still within the application. And even there, there are several aspects of the user interface which uh, uh, require some, some functionality that is uh, right to left specific. Um, but no less important is help and documentation. Uh, the websites of our projects and, and related sites the platforms we use for discussion, the, uh, the Ask website, Telegram channels, IRC, and uh, even uh, programs that we have for, uh, for uh, or, or uh, opportunities that we offer, or that the, the Document Foundation offers for training or for certification, uh, need to have at least some aspect of uh, cognizance, awareness of, uh, of right to left uh, issues. And uh, before I get into the more application-specific uh, uh, aspects of right-to-left support, I need to make the point that uh, right-to-left languages are generally not well supported outside of the applications themselves. This is not an accusation because this is also the responsibility of, of uh, our language communities, some of which would, don't even exist, but even the ones which do. Um, we have websites, like localized websites, which are entirely missing or are out of date. Um, we have uh, web pages, which are the target of links in the applications, which, are not, we, which don't exist in localized versions. Um, we don't have any translated user guides, not even for older versions of LibreOffice. Um, and the, the, the relevant sections of ask.libreoffice.org are either missing or, uh, or have very few um, uh, questions. Um, but after, after this rant, I'm gonna switch over to the, the, aspect, the aspect of support that's within the applications themselves, within the different modules. So we're putting that aside. Um, and also the, the negative tone, because within the application, things are better and, and improving, certainly not perfect. Um, but let's uh, talk about what happened over the past four years. Since it's been four years, we're not going to uh, be covering everything or going into the details. So first, where you can track uh, this progress yourselves if you want to. Um, some of the aspects of support are not trackable, especially those that are not within the applications. Um, but uh, if we're looking at in-application technical issues, they are tracked on the, the Document Foundation's Bugzilla. And there are several, there's more than one, several uh, meta bugs. There's the RTL, CTL, uh, RTL is for right to left, CTL is for complex text layout. Um, there's also RTL UI, which are meta bugs. RTL CTL is the equivalent of the, the CJK meta bug, which uh, Shinji mentioned in the, in the last presentation. Um, and we also have language specific issues. Um, and we have meta bugs for Hebrew, for Nuko, uh, and a single meta bug for Arabic and Farsi and uh, Metabug for, uh, for uh, languages which are relevant to, to minority groups in uh, China, I mean minority language communities within uh, China. Um, not that many issues there, unfortunately. There is underreporting uh, that correspond, I believe, that corresponds to the underrepresentation in our active user community and in the, the, the user statistics in general. Um, and of course, each of these meta bugs uh, tracks the actual bugs. Um, uh, just to give you a sample, because we're not uh, covering all the bugs, in, uh, in the 2017 State of Right to Left Support talk, uh, given by Leo Kaplan, who I want to thank also uh, uh, for work on this presentation, which he helped me with, um, he, gave, he listed uh, six uh, like typical bugs, three in Writer and three in Impress, uh, that were bugging, well, not just him, but uh, not necessarily the most important bugs, but uh, important ones. And uh, by 2018, uh, a few of them were, were fixed, and by now, they've all been fixed. That doesn't mean that all right to left bugs have been fixed, but uh, at least you know um, putting things on, on the table here and, uh, and attracting developer focus does have a, a positive effect. So you can see the when more or less uh, each of them was fixed. 
Um, a little statistics uh, for you. So, uh, 69 uh, right to left bug fixes but, uh, within the span of these four years. Um, and these bugs, about half of them were filed within that period. That doesn't mean they appeared within that period, just filed within that period. And uh, about half, a little less than half, are older bugs. Um, with respect to components, so um, the almost a majority, almost half of the bugs um, were writer bugs, writer specific. Eight of them in press or draw, seven in calc. Um, eight bugs were, were uh, assigned the, the UI component, but you, we could actually associate them with, uh, with this more or less with a specific application. So about the same distribution. Uh, no base bugs, by the way. Um, and of course the impress bugs are also relevant to draw mostly. Uh, seven bugs were, uh, were project-wide, so regard all applications, and uh, we have some smaller categories with, uh, with fixes in there. Um, now, what kind of bugs were fixed? Um, there, there were issues um, uh, with the display of right-to-left text in, uh, in cells, in, uh, in calc. There was, some, there was some navigation issues. Um, but over the past year, so since 2021, not a single bug related to calc was fixed. Um, in Impress, um, the, the layout issues were, were even more significant. I think uh, in Tirana and uh, Lior mentioned that. So there's been significant improvement there. Um, one issue in animation, one, one crasher, one uh, PowerPoint import issue. And uh, now if we go over to Writer, um, more than half the issues regard the import of uh, DOCX and uh, an RTF. And uh, that's not necessarily because there aren't many issues importing PowerPoint. I think it's mostly because people don't do that as much. Um, uh, but definitely, if you were in uh, Gabo's uh, interoperability uh, session, he also uh, made that point. Um, and some UI issues, behavior with selections, and also a layout in bottom to top, left to right. And uh, project-wide uh, issues, which are a bit more interesting. So th we, had, we had some issues in, spa in spacing, when you have both uh, left to right and right to left issues, uh, I'm sorry, text within a text box. Um, there, there was, uh, there's old Hungarian, so there's a script that, that was used in the past uh, in Hungary that is written from uh, right to left, and, and you, sometimes you couldn't use it at all, and that was fixed. Um, and some, uh, some cursor control uh, trouble. Oh, so um, uh, yeah, Nastalik is, uh, is a kind of Arabic font, and there was a rendering issue there. So that just, I'm not going into the details, that just gives you an, uh, an overview of what kinds of things were fixed. Uh, I, don't, I do want to highlight um, uh, a few of the issues that were fixed because they're interesting to look at, not just as issues, but also as a, as a process. Um, the, first, uh, the first issue is, uh, or, or, or um, a task that uh, the, the developers and designers worked on, uh, it was mostly a design task, is, is uh, reworking the dialogue that we use for font selection. Um, and uh, that's, this is the bug number, and uh, Shinji actually showed you, and uh, wait, let me say, let's see if I can get a mouse. Okay, so let, let's go through the text first, and then maybe we'll see the, the before and after pictures. So there was some, the, the, the situation we had is that it was decided that we need some work on, uh, on the font uh, selection dialogue and there was a commit um, and the design team was involved in the change of the dialogue design and uh, it, did, um, it did mean an improvement in the user experience for, um, uh, for when you use, when you had um, uh, multiple language groups enabled. Uh, yeah, so here I actually do want to click the link. So in Western only, this is the font selection dialogue if you only have Western languages enabled. And, uh, and, it's, it, and it 
you know, you have, uh, you have this is the, the baseline, it's kind of reasonable, we, we like it, um, but if you enabled another language group, and uh, here you see the text in Japanese, so never mind the Japanese, uh, pretend it's in English, um, we didn't get, like, the f we couldn't use the, or we wouldn't use the full um, uh, uh, area of the window or the window pane for each of the language groups, and we had to fit, and we were fitting all the, like, the, feature, the features of the font uh, for each of the language group in the same dialogue, and uh, so not in, uh, so less area for each widget, and it was kind of, it feels crowded, um, and the idea was to change it. But the thing is, the change um, uh, resulted in a situation where if uh, you also had CGK or, uh, or uh, right-to-left languages enabled, then you can no longer see the font that was selected, the non-Western font that's selected when you open the dialogue. Um, and the thing is, which is annoying. Um, and and the, the process that led to the initial uh, design change and commit was somewhat flawed. It was flawed because even though the, the CJK user group was uh, consulted, uh, because of either a miscommunication or there was not, not, weren't active users when this question was asked, then the, the feedback on the suggested design either was not made or did not make it to the, in, into the decision-making process, and so the commit was made. And our group, uh, so the, the right-to-left uh, language, um, uh, specific, language-specific groups, nor the general RTL group, we were not consulted at all, not sure why. I'm a, I'm a naughty uh, designer, or whoever. Um, but then, so, so, this was, so it was reported as a regression after the commit is, had already gone in. So that was the bad part of the process. The, the better part of the process is that once the regression was, was reported, we, um, uh, we caught up on the, uh, the discussion that should have happened before and happened on the regression bug page. And, uh, and Hei Kotitze uh, um, suggested an alternative design, a new layout, which was well, well received by um, uh, all uh, interested uh, parties, I hope, uh, everyone that I can think of. And uh, the new design is something like this, so it splits the, uh, the, the dialogue in, uh, in half, so you get, you get sort of a, vert a vertical split, and then you get not, not all of the, the area for each of the language groups, but, uh, but each of them gets more uh, uh, area and more visibility of the, the font family list, at least, uh, than was the case before. And uh, we like this. It's not perfect when you enable all three language groups, but, uh, but it's, it's certainly much better than, uh, than the change that had gone in before. Um, but of course, it's also a lesson that if we do the process right the first time, then we don't need to wait for the regression, and people don't have to complain, and it, take, and it will take less time overall, etc. Uh, another thing I want to highlight is uh, um, a fix to a uh, justification issue with, uh, with the, the Arabic script. Uh, it's a justification mechanism which involves uh, lengthening um, uh, line, horizontal lines in letters rather than uh, using spaces. And uh, I'm not going to go into the details of what that means, because there is another session, the, the following session is exactly about that. Uh, it's by uh, Hussein uh, Nurika. Um, but the bottom line that I want to uh, uh, mention here is that Khaled Hosni, um, uh, in one fell swoop, one, uh, one commit, fixed eight different uh, right to left, um, uh, well, justification uh, related bugs, and that's legendary and awesome, um, but there's a bit of work that remains following that change, and if you want to see what that work is, so that this is the link to the bug. Um, so this is, this is an example of how sometimes if, you, if someone can take, takes the time to uh, do a deep dive and make a fix that's very deeply into, into the code, and the, the, never mind the, the details, then you can fix a whole bunch of issues, and, uh, and rather than you know uh, uh, aiming for workarounds or something that's specific to this situation or that situation. So that's definitely, if we can have more of those, then that would be great. 
Um, one last issue I want to highlight that was fixed is a change of the default fonts um, for Arabic and Hebrew um, by Yusuf Phillips, um, who's no longer very active but was uh, more active a few years ago. Um, uh, several bugs that relate to that. There was zero development here, uh, effort here, so nothing was changed in the code, but uh, these, b these issues had very high visibility and the changes had very wide effect, including to our like, public image. Um, uh, there was a long community process of discussing what would be best, what are the best combinations. Um, uh, we had candidates, so there was more than one round. Um, and there were also some supporting fixes to rendering that allowed uh, uh, this to happen for some of these fonts. However, this process was not finished, so whoever is, uh, so I, I want to ask people in this room and out of this room uh, to help me push for this process to finally be finished. Um, and yeah, and, and it's not finished because we're missing community feedback. The, the Arab uh, language community has not been very active and not, I'm not a native speaker, so I don't feel qualified to make the choice. So this is not done yet, despite the great work that has already happened. Um, finally, some with the, the uh, say five or six minutes I have left, uh, some noteworthy outstanding challenges, things that are not fixed. Uh, so, perhaps the most visible one is that damn PDF text run flipping issue. So if we take the document on the left and we save it to a PDF and we open it again in, in Writer or in, uh, in, uh, in Press or wherever, we get the document on the right, which also has the wrong font, but that's not, not the bug I'm talking about. Um, the thing is the characters appear in the opposite direction. So the, the, look at the, this uh, square char character, a final mem in Hebrew. So here it's on the right instead of on the left. And, uh, and, and here the, the Arabic is also reversed. So this is super annoying. And it mean, effectively, it means we can't open PDFs with right-to-left content, can't, use, can't even view them, certainly can't edit them. Um, so... There is a tender for this to be fixed this year, but all the tenders are blocked because of some secret uh, legal trouble that I, I don't know what it is, what, 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 uh, what that's about. But for some reason, it's preventing us from getting the fix that we want and that we need. So, so work on it, and maybe if you can accept that thing from, from whatever legal reason it is that ten tenders aren't happening or whatever, we really want this to, to go ahead. Um, another issue, which is more fun, the, the rest are more fundamental ones um, uh, and th that have seen no work or almost no work, um, is the issue of start and, and, and end versus left and right. Um, and uh, this is the, the bug number. So if you think about paragraphs that are written left to right, they start on the left of their first line and they end on the right of their last line. But right to left paragraphs, well, not necessarily in English, but if, if a paragraph is right to left, it starts on the right edge of the first line and it ends on the left edge of the last line. Um, but we have a lot of settings in the UI and possibly also in the, the format, I'm not sure because I haven't looked into it. Certainly in the user interface, which say um, uh, start and end, but actually main left or right, or maybe not, and it's not uh, consistent. And sometimes you want all options. So for example, if you're looking at paragraph alignment, we have left alignment and we have right alignment. But then if I switch the direction, I still get left alignment. But maybe I want my paragraph to be aligned to the start. Um, and right now I can't do that. I, when, when I change the, the paragraph direction, I also have to change the alignment. So the alignment is visual and not logical in that sense. So we need two extra options here. Um, uh, and, but if you look at the, the last line part, here you, here you do have start or end. So here we, we do see some partial work towards this goal, um, uh, but it's not, it's not uniform. Um, and in other cases, we see, um, uh, we see this in, uh, in uh, bef 
the, the other direction. So the, the UI says before or after rather than left or right, but it can mean either left or right depending on what the direction is, and you're not sure exactly what it's gonna do. Uh, so you have to guess where the, the, uh, the column will be added. So sometimes it is a better idea to say to the left or to the right. Um, and this also depends on what, what direction is the table's column progression. Um, but actually, we don't have a well-defined concept of table column progression, at least not in the user interface. Um, uh, and, and what happens if you take one column and you make it right to left, but the column uh, progression direction of the, the entire table is, is left to right? So this is, I don't even know what the answer should be, but it should be something. Uh, and there are a bunch of these uh, issues uh, throughout uh, LibreOffice that need to be addressed uh, at some point. Um, and the uh, last issue I will, I will highlight specifically is uh, deepening the support for languages. Not for specific languages, for languages. So LibreOffice does not let you set the language of a piece of text, which might sound weird to you, but it's just the case. LibreOffice doesn't really support languages. Not really. It, it recognizes language groups, but it doesn't properly support languages. Um, uh, but, but what if within the same language group, I want to uh, distinguish what I do with Arabic and what I do with Hebrew. Or even in the Western language group, I want to uh, do something for Russian and something else for uh, English. Uh, and, and the very specific example, I want my, my paragraph style or my character style to have a different font for Russian and for English or for Arabic and for Hebrew. This is not supported. At least not in the terms of the user interface. I don't know about the, the, the ODT format. Ho hopefully it's better there, but uh, there's no visibility for it in, uh, in the user interface. And I also don't know about the code. Yes, Regina. Yes. <laughs> Oh, but, uh, but, in, but when I set a character style for several characters, some of them might be in English and some of them might be in, in Russian or in Hebrew. And when, when you have it in Russian, uh, then, then you need the character style. No, I do not. I want the same style. I want a style to encompass font information. Right now, the style encompasses uh, font information for the different language groups. I can have a different font set for Western uh, characters and in the same style and for right to left characters and for CJK characters. So three settings, but I need a per language setting. Same thing for paragraph styles, by the way. Anyway, um, uh, other challenges which I'll only sketch briefly. Um, there are a few RTL issues defined in se as severe, which are open. Um, uh, compatibility with MS Office formats is very painful in general, but it's even more painful for right to left. Um, and for a lot of people, okay, this is only anecdotal, this is not, you know, proper survey. A lot of people have told me that the reason that they're not switch, they will not switch from Microsoft Office to LibreOffice is because of right to left incompatibilities with their file formats. Um, and then there are uh, the less represented languages which have their own idiosyncratic features among the right to left languages. Uh, for example, in uh, ancient Tibetan, the entire document is a single paragraph. And uh, there is a problem when you have a single paragraph over, say, 50 pages. Um, uh, LibreOffice somehow doesn't like it that much. Uh, and that makes some Tibetan text. I, I, I can only say because the bug says that I've never I've never uh, worked with Tibetan myself. Uh, not usable. So different languages have their own like weird idiosyncrasies, and we don't we shouldn't wait like for uh, users to report these issues. There should be at some point some effort to go over different languages, and at least you know just from reading the Wikipedia article about these languages, you can tell that oh this might have this issue, this might have that issue, um, uh, and not wait for the bug report. And finally, um, uh, the number of bugs has increased significantly. Um, uh, four years ago, it was 72. I'm sorry, number of open bugs. It was 72 uh, four years ago. 
Now it's 195 with 21 unconfirmed bugs. Um, I may, it, it's, it's more because of that, that underreporting has lessened um, rather than that, that the, a lot of new bugs have suddenly materialized. But there are uh, a lot. There is a large number of right to left specific uh, bugs, and it's increased. And it might increase further the more people use non writer apps and import PowerPoint and things like that. So thank you for that, and uh, see you next year in a few years. Who knows? Thanks, Ayla. Thanks a lot.